Hello and welcome to another how to play video, this time about Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon. This game takes place on the planet Arak um, Rubicon, on which the super powerful rare mystical resource Melange, um, uh, Coral can be found. Um, the several houses of corporations fight over power or influence over the planet uh, while a militaristic religious group the Fram, I mean, sorry the Rubicon Liberation Front tries to fight off the corporations you play as a genetically modified warrior the Kwisatz no again wrong um, the augmented human C4621 who's basically just sent there to make money for his emperor and I'm, I mean his handler uh, however, stuff happens and you delve into the history of the planet, how, was, how it was turned from a major colony into a devastating desert and what the secret behind the spice um, coral, of course, really is. Uh, this one is a little bit different than my other how to play videos in that it's a single video, not a uh, video series. And I'm just covering a bunch of points that are fairly important to new players um, information that exceeds the in-game tutorial which otherwise is fairly decent all right the game version i'm talking about is version 101 now the very first thing i want you to do before starting game before um, creating a new game is to watch the video by vadibidia about um, the most important beginner uh, information to Armored Core 6. The link is on screen right now. Um, if you haven't watched that yet, go ahead. It's really, really, really good. I will just add another bunch of points that um, I think mm. sh should also be added to the things that he said there. Um, all right, so let's continue with the addition of my points. Now, one point Vadi talks a lot about, and um, it took me quite some time to research details about that, um, is replaying missions and um, getting higher tiers. You can see here a list of missions I can replay, um, the ones with the exclamation mark I haven't replayed. Uh, everything I have replayed has a rating between well, C and S here in this case. So. Um, should you replay missions? Do you need to replay missions? The answer is a clear yes and no. Why you might want to replay missions is they give you the monetary reward every time you do them. So um, yeah, some of them are actually really well um, priced here. Um, so you can make quite some money in order to um, buy more parts. I will s talk about a little bit later why you need so much money in this game. The other reason why you might want to replay a mission is uh, you might want to get the battle logs. The battle logs, you can see the symbol uh, quite in the center now. Um, I already received battle logs from these missions, but I have a mission down here, I'll infiltrate grid 086 where the battle log symbol is grayed out and there is no tick between uh, afterwards which means i uh, the, the game lets me know that there is a battle log hidden in here i can replay the mission in order to receive it battle logs are actually quite useful every time you get one you will fill a progress bar after the mission and when the progress bar is filled you increase your hunter rank and unlock a new item which they're usually good they're, they're not incredibly good but they're good i currently use none of them in any of my builds but i can see myself using them in the future and i did use them before so they are good enough to um justify replaying a mission for but um they're not that essential i'd say so how about the rankings um depending on whom you ask and what sources you have they will tell you that um, highest ranking means highest rewards. Uh, it, uh, I think in one of the older videos of Vadi, he says that um, the ranking is required to unlock uh, items. 
that is not true in the current version of the game, um, period. The ranking right now is generally just for you to know how well you've done. Um, there is rarely any incentive to go for a higher ranking than just to have the ranking. Even the rewards are not strictly tied to the ranking. Yes, you get a higher ranking if you, uh, if you are less damaged during the mission and if you use less ammo, but um, for instance, the, um, this mission, Destroy the Tester AC, my full reward for um, the, the S tier was 47k, but I also had a run in which I made 49k and only get, got A. But uh, the S tier run was just much, much faster. So time ta uh, is taken to account in a, in a, on a large scale. Um, they don't tell you exactly what, how you failed if you don't get S. So it's most of the time it's it's uh, I think you you were too slow. You have to finish the missions really swiftly. Um, but again, it's it's not required for anything to get S tier ranking in the current build of the game. Why you want to replay this is mostly for the battle logs in, in during the missions where there are lo battle logs. Um, for the monetary rewards, I'll talk about this in a bit, and to try out builds, especially the two missions, Destroy the Tester AC and GWT 135 Cleanup, are two early game missions. Both are really short. In GWT 135, you fight a bunch of um, MTs and uh, some helicopters. It takes about 10 minutes tops. There's no AC in there. While in Destroy the Tester AC, you fight a single AC. Uh, Buddy said in his video, you should probably replay this one a couple of times to in order to get used to the mechanics. I fully agree. Um, this is a really good one to, to test your skills against um, AC for the first times for the first time. And this is just a fun shoot a few targets and you're done kind of mission. Both you can use to to practice, you can use them to try out new builds. And the fun thing is Unlike the um, testing tool you, you can use um, uh, in the um, sortie section, the AC test, in this one you actually get money for doing so. So this is really um, a neat little thing to keep in mind. But that's really all reasons you have to replay missions. So what do I need all that money for? After all, I can sell everything I have for the price it cost me, right? The MAJ200 costs 105k. If I want to buy it for my right arm, I have it for the left arm already and I can sell it for exactly the same price. So basically you can create whatever build you want to with the parts you have if you just sell everything else. Now here is why you might want to have some extra cash in the game. I have usually a few builds at the ready. It's not absolutely required to have several builds, but you might want to have a few weapons lying around. Why is that? Um, some missions, I think most of the missions you can beat with whatever build you can, can come up with, but some missions are just much easier for certain builds than, than other, others. Especially there are some bosses that are very resilient to certain types of weapons. If you replay a mission, you kind of need to, or you, you might want to uh, do it in one go. But if you play a mission for the first time, you don't know what's in there. Um, you might think, oh, all right, I just got the Gatling gun. I want to really try the, the Gatling gun. And then suddenly there is a boss that is super resistant to pretty much everything, but he has a shield a pulse shield that can be easily blown apart with a pulse gun. Well, um, if you play the mission for the first time and you fail at the boss, you can restart at the checkpoint just, befo uh, just before the boss and you can even change your loadout. So if you have a pulse gun lying around, you can equip that and try again to beat the boss now with more appropriate weapons but if you don't have the cash to have stuff lying around this is not an option to you you have to beat it with whatever 
um, AC you have designed or restart the entire mission, buy new parts, well, sell old parts, buy new parts and do the entire mission again. This is way more time consuming. So having some extra cash just to have parts lying around or if you have uh, a, a lot of money, uh, you can even have entire builds lying around. Um, that helps you very much for any mission trying for the first time. If you replay the mission, you of course know, uh, should know what type of enemies you'll face, so you will have probably the best um, loadout for that mission already. All right, replaying mission is not super crucial, I said, other than for the money, but uh, just to be, sh uh, be clear about this, still the, the training missions and once you unlock the arena, those things you should always do whenever you can. They are short, they are fun, and they bring lots of uh, rewards in form of OST chips or new parts from the training mission. So those you should definitely do whenever they are available to you. Once the item shop opens up a little, buying every single weapon, trying them out and then resetting them is a little bit time consuming. Um, you can of course check out their stats, but well, there is only so much you can learn from hard numbers. If you want to know how it might feel to use that weapon, why not just press X or whatever it is on the keyboard. You will see it on the lower left corner of the screen. And then you'll have a little video that shows you just the ver very basics. But it is a little bit interesting if you have, for instance, a charge weapon and you're not quite sure um, how that would look like. Um, here we have the Curtis rifle. Right, so that already gives me a little bit information about the overall feel of a weapon plus the stats. So I can probably already discern if I'm interested in trying this one out in a build or not. Once OST upgrades start, this can be a little bit confusing. Um, just a few pointers. You might want to look at system un unlocks first because that is stuff that helps for most builds. The boost kick, Barty already pointed out, is super useful. Um, I like the quick turn, um, but it's definitely something you, you might want to use or might not want to use. Weapon Bay also gives you a interesting new option by um, using your shoulder parts basically as, as holsters for weapons, especially if you have a very light build web, uh, um, light build um, loadout, you might not want to use every single shoulder slot for a weapon, but instead you might want to switch between um, like a dual trigger guns and a uh, melee weapon, for instance. Uh, this allows you to do that. But here, I mean, besides the boost kick, I'd say the rest is really up to your taste. Um, but it's 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 nice. It's it's a single purchase unlock thing, um, really uh, really useful for certain play styles. Core expansions are the next thing you should probably look at um, because you have one ex expansion slot on each of your ACs. Um, I, I agree again with Buddy that terminal armor is a decent um, thing to buy because it's it's passive. The other ones have, in my opinion, the greatest problem here is that they take some time to actually activate, especially pulse armor, which should help you stay alive while you're being um, under under massive assault. The fact that it takes you a second or two to activate this is troublesome. It, it only really helps you if you expect an attack to come anytime soon, but you, you cannot avoid it. Like you want to push through enemy lines or something like this. Very niche, in my opinion. Um, the attack and damage control. Well, damage control is, is still something that is relatively good for everyone. Upgrade for your repair kits. Um, upgrade for the ACS damage mitigation, that is nice. Uh, the attack controls are those things where you level for specific damage types. 
it is true that you could in theory level for each individual build for each individual level um, optimally for whatever weapons you use and then whenever you change your loadout you reset the OS upgrades and, and repurchase stuff that you now need but first of all you have to reset all of your upgrades um, the, the more you have the more work it's going to be also it ain't free um, so I would suggest thinking a bit more about your over overall uh, um, game style don't focus too much on attack control it's three percent um, five percent depending um, so don't overthink this in the beginning I mean one respec is not the end of the world but also uh, don't expect this to be like uh, like another uh, cu strong customization thing like the um, assembly here you kind of commit to stuff this one is a little silly but i think it's still a fair point once you choose to paint your ac um, I, I know this sounds like not very relevant but i mean y you do play around with loadouts and assembly so eventually you might want to um, change the overall look of uh, the, the whole thing and um, once you painted one part you can then copy your um, color set that you created by choosing a color for each subsection and then co um, paste it under the user um, color set and then you can just apply this color set to whichever part you feel like or even to the entire frame uh, sorry <laughs> all units here we go so this way you can easily paint your um, AC in whatever um, abomination of a color scheme you feel like keep in mind that the color scheme remains the same even if I um, change out equipment so even if I swap the weapon the color scheme is still applied you can have different color schemes for different loadouts so as I remember yeah that one is all black again right so you can even paint your different AC loadouts differently um, which I mean, as I said, it's it's it, it doesn't really change your stats, but it's it's just a neat thing they they uh, implemented here for us. Last but not least, um, how many builds should you have? How many weapons should you have lying around? Um, this can be really confusing everyone points out that it's really fun to have different builds and having uh, trying uh, trying out with different uh, trying uh, to play with different loadouts uh, and you already saw that i have uh, a few builds here do not worry about this too much before the end of the first um, chapter which is attack the watch point just before this mission you will unlock a new weapon that i would strongly suggest you bring along to this mission or at least buy it so you can switch it out later but until this point you have very little um, choice in your arsenal you do have already quadrupeds um, the reverse bipedal um, uh, legs and um, the the tracks but when it comes to weapons and um, core parts it is, is, is not really that much to play around with um, I did try out a few different um, loadouts but everything felt very samey to me and I was a little bit frustrated uh, by well not enjoying it as much once you finish this mi mission attack the watch point uh, attack the watch point sorry 
you will unlock so many more parts so many more weapons and um, the, the game opens up so much so I would strongly suggest kind of rushing to this mission um, get the weapon that you unlocked just before that um, equip it or uh, leave it uh, lying around at home so you can s uh, switch to it later uh, the boss otherwise is really really hard and once you've uh, finished that weapon or uh, finished that mission play around with different uh, loadouts we play missions um, have fun <laughs> I, I'd say this is really um, the, the mission after which um, the game really shows his, uh, his uh, true strength all right, um, I hope this was um, helpful to some of you, that, that was somewhat enlightening and I hope I could um, update the, the points that others already made. Um, I'm sure changes are coming anytime soon, especially when it comes to the, to the uh, replay rating that seems a little bit gratuitous at the moment. Anyway, I hope you will be enjoying the game and I hope you'll have a great day. See you again. Goodbye.